Good morning and welcome to worship this morning on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. We're glad that once again you've come together to hear God's word, to listen to some beautiful music, and to pray and to give worship and thanks. As we gather this morning and you're watching, whether on YouTube or on Facebook, feel free to go ahead and comment and like um, the, the service. Say good morning. Uh, let people know that you're here. Let people know that you're watching with them. As we gather this morning, let us pause. We'll hear the story today of Jesus in the midst of the storm, declaring peace. Let us live into that peace by taking a moment. Take a breath and prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have have sinned sinned against against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our Defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear. And preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown you down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they're seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire and after the fire a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in a mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. There came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with a sword. I alone am left. And they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Hehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elijah, son of Shaphat, of Abel Meholah, as prophet in your place. Whomever escapes from the sword of Hazel, Hehu shall kill, and whoever escapes from the sword of Hehu, Elijah shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. The Psalm 85, the refrain is, I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. Our second reading is from Romans, the 10th chapter. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who comes who does these things will live by them. But the righteous that come from faith say, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? 
that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with a heart and is so justified, and one who confesses with a mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they were sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I wait for you, O Lord, and your word is my hope. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land. for The wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. As we look at these morning's readings, we talk, we see an encounter with the living God. A God who shows up not in windstorms and firestorms and earthquakes and displaces of destruction, but a God who shows up in the gentle breeze. The story of Elijah who is sitting, who goes up to the mountain, who is running for his life because he's afraid of the people whom God sent him to proclaim a message to. He's hiding from his own people who have turned from God. And he's cranky. And he needs some time away. And so God comes to him and says to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah answers, I have been here. I have been zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. So God turns to him. And says, go. 
Go stand on the mountain, and I will pass before you. And the mountain, and from the mountain top experience there, there's great winds that are breaking rocks into pieces. There's earthquakes, there's fire, and then there's silence. And it's in that silence, not in the earthquake, not in the fire, that Elijah recognizes that God has passed before him. And he asks him the question again, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he responds in the same way. Elijah then is commissioned to anoint a king and find a successor. And shortly thereafter, we stop hearing about Elijah until we embrace Jesus on another mountaintop story where we see Elijah and Moses speaking together in the transfiguration. We see that God's work had been completed in Elijah. It's a funny thing about mountaintops. They're good places to pray. They're good places to go up to, to get away from it all for a little bit. And certainly the ancient world saw it that way because it, and it only makes sense that you would go up to the mountaintop because that is where you would get closer to God, right? God who dwells in the heavens, you go up the mountain. You leave behind all the things that are down below to encounter the God who calls you to God's own self. The hardest part about those mountaintop experiences is that we can't stay up there. We have to go back down. We have to come back down to the, mount, to the area, to the world, to its chaos. And sometimes when we're, when we're going from there, and if any of you have ever been through an experience like a good retreat or a good spiritual experience, or even sometimes sitting in church and hearing a really good sermon and going, man, this is going to be great, and then you head back out into the world, you head back to work, back to your life, back to your marriage, back to the things that are happening, and you wonder, wow, well, I'm glad that experience lasted. It's not too different than our story today from our gospel. For the disciples had just had their own mountaintop experience. Our gospel this morning picks up right where we left off last week. You may recall from last week that Jesus fed the 5,000, that the disciples were, were fed the 5,000 and it filled baskets full, not counting women and children were fed. They had just experienced and seen the abundance of God provided for them, provided for God's people. They were witnesses to the fact, to the continuing fact that this Jesus is not just anybody. Now Jesus then, when our gospel picks up this morning, sends the disciples on back over to the, across the sea. And Jesus himself goes up the mountain to pray, to be with God, to be with his Father. While he's doing that and the disciples are on the sea, the wind begins to pick up. The waves begin to crash the boat that they're in. It's not the first time the disciples have been caught in a storm. And as all this is going on, as, as the waves are crashing against the boat, as the wind is blowing, 
This strong wind is blowing against the boat. They look out, and Jesus comes down and sees them, and they see him walking on water, and they are terrified. Not too different sometimes when we see God face to face. The answer isn't always, our experience is not always awe and wonder. But sometimes when we really experience the presence of God, our our sense is to hide our faces. To be afraid. Because sometimes when God shows up on our front doorsteps, when God shows up to us, we know that it's, everything's going to have to be different. We know that when we hear that gospel call to transform and change our lives, our minds, our very spirits, it's a call to be different. It's a call to live differently in the world. It's a call that leaves us to leave all things behind and to embrace whatever God has for us. To walk through the storm. And yeah, it's terrifying. But we do not do it on our own. For that call that comes to us is these very words of Jesus, this promise. Jesus commands and says, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Take heart. Do not be afraid. The it is I is really fascinating in this. Because it's not just Jesus saying, hey, look, it's me, Jesus. But in the original language in which this was written, that is Greek, it is I is a translation of the Greek ego e me. which says, which means, I am. Take heart, it is I am, do not be afraid. We might say to ourselves, well, what's the big deal with I am? Well, we go back. To Exodus. And Moses encountering the burning bush. God speaking to Moses, commissioning Moses to do something. To go and set God's people free. To go to Pharaoh and say, God's people are to be free. Moses says to God, well, whom shall I say sent me? And God replies, I am. Tell them, I am sent you. In the Greek Old Testament, God speaks to Moses and says, Ego eimi. Jesus stands in the storm. Take heart, ego a me. Do not be afraid. God is here. Peter, who we often hear about, turns to Jesus says, well, if it is you, then command me to come to you on the water. Jesus calls him, come. 
And Peter does it, right? It's not that Peter steps out of the boat and immediately falls into the water. No, Peter walks on the water. He comes towards Jesus. You can think about this beautiful image of Peter's eyes focused on Jesus, who is calling him to himself. And Peter stumbles. The gospel points out that Peter begins to notice the strong wind. And once he notices the strong wind blowing all around him, he becomes frightened and and he begins to sink. It's not too different than us, isn't it? We look at the world around us. We look at, you know, our eyes. We can be so focused and have these moments where we are so focused on the life that Jesus has for us, where our life, where we're praying, where we're reading Scripture, where we know and we trust that God's going to take care of things, that God has given to us Jesus Christ, and we are not going to be afraid, and we resolve in our hearts, in our minds, that that's going to be the case. That we recognize that the storm is pushing all around us? We step out of the boat and we keep our eyes on Jesus? And how easy it is for us to see the storm again. How easy it is for us for the storm to overcome us, to overtake us. We feel like we're sinking once again. We cry out. We cry out again, Lord, save me. And although Jesus asks and says, you of little faith, why did you doubt? It doesn't change. It doesn't change Jesus' relationship with Peter. It might seem like you of little faith is a statement of judgment. It's not. For that's all of us, right? People of little faith. People who doubt. People who struggle daily with the storms throwing around us, the earthquakes, the fires. People longing to cry out and do cry out, Lord, save me, and wanting that gentle breeze to blow through. Wanting a gentle breeze. wanting us to hear that voice. The voice of God which continues to speak to us. The voice of God which says to us, take heart, it is I am, do not be afraid. Yes, our hearts are fearful. Yes, we are of little faith. But the Lord hears us, continues to call us. Gives us the ability to not be afraid. Invites us to fix our eyes on him. And him who loves us. On him who is God for you. And it was always calling you to himself. In 
And that presence is not harsh. But it's quiet. And found in the silence. And reminds us that in the silence... The storms are made peaceful, and God is with us. Thanks be to God. We profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need, responding, hear our prayer to Lord in your mercy. Gracious God, we pray today for your church throughout the world, embracing new ways to gather and to be together, to continue to spread the good news of your Son, Jesus, in the midst of the storm in this world. Continue to uphold your church, hold it close, and continue to declare to it, do not be afraid. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray today for our world. 
that you may make it abundant, make it a place where crops may flourish in abundance, and give us enough water to, to care for the land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of this world, for the leaders of our nation, for the leaders of our state and local governments, for your wisdom, for your guidance through the turmoil that we experience. They may in all things see you and care for those whom you have empowered them to care for. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today for all who are sick, who are suffering, who are in hospital rooms. We pray for those who are underemployed and unemployed, for those who are seeking work. That in all these things, Lord, you will calm their hearts. Be with them. Bind up their wounds. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Remember before you today, Lord, today, this congregation of the lakes. As they are gathered in various places, watching church through various means. Continue to keep them in faith, trusting in the promise that you are with us and with them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And remember before you today all those who have died. Remember before you those who now rest in Christ. And we look forward to the day that we will see you again and see them again in your promised kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please, wherever you're at, share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you both. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise you. Let the heavens be joyful and the earth be glad. We bless you for creating the whole world, for your promise to your people Israel, and for Jesus Christ in whom your fullness dwells. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Guiding his people, he leads us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. Dying on the cross, he saves us. Rising from the dead, he gives new life. Living with you, he prays for us. Send to us your Holy Spirit, that being made one with Christ, we may be made one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. We praise you, eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your word made flesh in the holy and life-giving spirit. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. few announcements as we conclude this morning. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, we postponed the annual meeting, the semi-annual meeting. That's the mid-year meeting uh, one more week uh, just to give some more time together for things to be gathered so we can give you a really good report on how things are at at the church. So if uh, I, in the newsletter, I've put a Zoom link for that. You will need to register to be able to, to attend. That day we, we can have some good conversation um, without it being a public forum. 
Uh, so if there are questions or concerns, you can know that they will be within the body of the church uh, to be discussed. So look forward to that next week. Uh, basically what we're going to do is we'll close, uh, we'll finish up worship, I'll pack up things here, and then uh, it takes me just a little bit to get home, uh, and then we'll get set up and, and start the meeting uh, shortly thereafter. So look forward to that. Um, it's, uh, it'll be good to report on what's happening. That we're, the church, of course, has some difficulties uh, that as we head forward to, that's to be expected, um, but we're not, uh, we're not terrible and we're not far off. God has been very blessing for us during this time. Um, a lot of that has been able to happen because of your generosity, um, so I remind you all that, that you can still give and are invited to give to the church uh, so that we can continue to care for um, those in need in our community. Uh, we continue each month to give our our designated offering to Lutheran Social Services. Uh, we continue to take care of our, our synod and our larger church body so that they can provide services and their ministries throughout the country uh, and throughout the world. Uh, so thank you for those of you who continue to give. If you are not giving or you've kind of suspended it, uh, there's a couple ways that you can do that. You can give online. That's the best way. It comes right into our bank account uh, that way. And the other way is you can mail in a check um, or you can stop by during the church's office hours to, uh, if you prefer to just drop it off in person. Uh, so we'll look forward again. Thank you to all of you who have been giving uh, on a regular um, basis here. We've really appreciated it and it keeps things moving and happening. Uh, on Wednesday evenings, uh, if you are looking for something a little more during the week, Wednesday evenings, we premiere a Wednesday evening prayer. That's at 6.30. We're currently on chapter 4 of the Song of Solomon, but that doesn't mean that you can't come and join, uh, join in the fun. Uh, that video is at 6.30, and then you can always catch it later on in the week on YouTube. A special thank you once again to Catherine and Carol for providing music for us this morning. Really adds to it to have some vocals... Uh, accompanying it uh, for a little while there. As many of you know, we were just, just having Carol play, which was lovely too. So, and thank you to Chris for reading this morning. I hope you are well. I, all, we'll be in touch as things go. If you need anything, of course, contact the church office, as well as if you get the newsletter, all of my contact information is on there as well. People of God, in the midst of the storm, God blesses us. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. I catch the sweet though far off him that hails a new creation. No storm can shake my.